Hi there. This video is going to be a quick explanation about why I don't like using the mask input on a merge node in Nuke. It's something I've seen a lot recently when I've been picking up other people's scripts. When I ask artists about why they use the mask input, they say things like, it's easy, and it's simple, and it's less nodes, and it just makes sense to work this way. And they think that I'm being fussy when I disagree with these reasons. Maybe I am being fussy. Maybe I'm too stuck in my ways. Maybe I'm just a grumpy old compositor who doesn't like other ways of doing things. Lots of people I've worked with might agree with that. But I thought I should at least explain my reasonings as to why using the mask input on a merge node is far from ideal. I've recently started to learn Python, and one of the things that I've read that I really appreciate is the Python style guide. This is a document about suggested best practices for writing your Python code. One of the key philosophies in it is that the code is read much more often than it is written, and therefore readability counts. There is also a document called the Zen of Python, which includes these lines. Explicit is better than implicit. Simple is better than complex. And complex is better than complicated. When I read through this list, I felt like most of it was equally applicable to how you should build your comp scripts in Nuke. While it's important to build an efficient script that renders quickly, it's equally important to build a script that is easy to read and understand. Computers are fast and cheap these days. Humans haven't kept up. Saving a few milliseconds of CPU time is pointless if you build a script that confuses an artist for 15 minutes before they can address a simple note. I'm all for using as few nodes in a script as possible, but I agree with the idea that explicit is better than implicit. And I think that adding a few basic nodes to your script to make it easier to follow is a good thing. Which brings me back to the mask input on a merge node. The mask input on a merge node allows you to control the areas of the A input that are merged with the B input via a third input, the mask. By default, it takes the alpha channel of the mask input and uses it as a map for the operation. In this example, I want to use the alpha channel from the color wheel to mask the checkerboard as it goes over the white constant. I can achieve the same result by separating the mask operation and the merge operation out into two steps. To do this, I would apply the alpha channel from the color wheel as a mask for the checkerboard as step one, and then I would merge the checkerboard over the constant. Some people would argue that this extra node is unnecessary and untidy, but I believe that the added readability makes it worthwhile. In this setup, I can see the flow of my script more clearly. When I zoom out and lose the labels on my node inputs, I still know what each branch of the script is doing, especially if you make a point of always running your B pipes vertically and your A pipes horizontally. Compare that to the example where everything is happening in one node, and you can see that it's far less obvious. By applying the mask to the A pipe before the merge node, I can easily visualize the regions of the A input that are being used in the merge operation. If I apply the mask to the merge node directly, there's no way to see how it's being applied to the A input. Being able to see this step separately from the merge operation not only helps someone follow what is happening in the script, but it's also useful when troubleshooting problems in the script. And by keeping the mask and merge operation separate, I can disable each part separately too. This also helps with script readability and troubleshooting. If I disable this merge node, I can't differentiate what was coming from the A input or what was coming from the mask. Working explicitly goes one step further if you want to start modifying the map. For example, I might want to use this red channel of the color wheel as the mask, and I might want to invert that channel too. I could do all of this inside the merge node by changing the mask channel drop down here and checking the invert checkbox. But if you look at the merge node, you can see that nothing on the node itself changes when I do this. As a user, I have no idea that anything other than the default is happening unless I go looking for it. And even then, it's hard to visualize what the inverted red channel might look like. To make these decisions more obvious, I would use a shuffle and then an invert node after the color wheel before I apply it as a mask. Even if these nodes don't say exactly what's happening inside them, I at least have an idea that we might be using something other than the alpha channel as the mask, and I can see the result of each step. As you can probably tell, I think script readability is really important. I think you should always assume that someone other than yourself might have to open any script you create or that even if the deadline for the shot might be today, you could have to open this script in three months time and you'll need to be able to work out what you are doing when you set everything up. Using the mask input on a merge node is just one of many things that I think make a script slightly less easy to read. 
Let me know if you agree with me about the mask input on a merge node uh, in the comments below and subscribe if you want to see any more Nuke workflow tips like this in the future. Thanks for watching.